Now that we've completed our front and back draft in size four, and we have our sleeve to match, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all of these out in muslin fabric. And then we're gonna sew these up and do a test fit back to our dress form. The reason why we use muslin fabric is because it doesn't have any finishes on it, no colors, no prints, nothing. And it's just a basic plain weave fabric. Ideally, everything that you're going to use in muslin will probably eventually end up in the trash can. So you just want to have some very inexpensive fabric to work with while you are designing and building brand new patterns that are going to eventually become master slopers and doing any kind of experimental draping on the dress form. That muslin fabric itself has kind of a dingy yellow look to it. Some people would say it's even kind of like a vanilla color. And the reason being is this is just the raw color before they do any kind of a dipping, dyeing, bleaching, anything like that. The muslin fabric that you're gonna to wanna to purchase, ideally you would be getting what's called a draping muslin. And the draping muslin kind of has an, the weave isn't as tight. It's a little more what we would say open weave. And this is easier for you when you're drawing lines with a pencil or pulling with a pin. And you're gonna learn these techniques as we go through the process. Now, if you've done any draping or pattern making, you would know there's a lot of emphasis on the grain line and the balance lines and everything is perfectly squared up. And then when you do a test fit back to your dress form and back to your client, you're always checking to make sure that the grains are staying totally perpendicular and all of the horizontal balance lines are parallel to the ground. So for all the time that you spent developing your patterns and getting them just right, if you were to now just straight, just cut them on some fabric and then put it on your dress form, you might have a fitting issue and you're gonna think it's your patterns, but really what it was, was your muslin was off grain. So what we need to do is we need to take this muslin and make sure that all of the grains inside of the muslin are totally squared up before you cut out your pattern pieces. The, the muslin fabric itself, it kind of takes a, a little bit of a, abuse you'll see that it'll be on giant rolls. And if you work in a design house, you'll see where rolls will be propped up against the wall or laying flat on the ground. Or some people will take, you know, 12 yards off and then just crunch it up and push it to a corner and just use bits at a time. And so all these different ways that um, muslin's being stored and handled is pulling it off grain. At one point in time though, this muslin, it was on a loom and all the threads were perfectly squared up and then you were going for the cross grains and everything's getting tampered back into place. So it did get produced perfectly. It's just over time, all of the grains get um, a little bit pulled and twisted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn to take off a piece of muslin, the size that we're gonna need, and then I'm gonna show you how to block it and get all the grains perfectly squared back up again. Now taking a look at your pattern pieces, the grains that are going vertical, so from the neck down towards the waist, this is vertical, that you're gonna wanna have those to be the threads that are tight so they don't stretch out over time. And this is gonna be your length grain. On the muslin that you have, the easiest way to find which direction is the length grain is, for instance, if you were to order three yards in length, that's the length grain. And then how wide is the fabric? So for instance, if this was 44 inches wide or 62 inches wide, that would be the cross grain. So the length grain is what we're concerned about at first. Now here I have some muslin where it's already got pieces that have been cut out of this. What I don't want to do is I don't want to lay out my pattern piece, take some scissors and sit here and just cut out a square. If I do that, all the edges of the square that I just cut are uneven. We want to have 
them to be perfect all the way down to the very last thread inside the grain. We want to have a perfect straight line going across the width and into the length. Now one of the cool things about plain weave fabric is it only has the grains going like a basket weave. So what I can do is I can tear this all the way across. And when you tear the plain weave fabric, it's tearing exactly in a perfect straight line all the way down to the very last thread inside of there. So if you were to take a magnifying glass and come look at this, the very next thread that you see on here is the beginning of this piece of fabric. And then that works in both directions. So this was the width of my fabric. I can clip it here. And this is going in the length of my fabric. So exact same thing. So we're going to use this to our advantage. Now what I want to do is I want to cut out this pattern piece. And I want to block out a piece of muslin, obviously, that's a little bit bigger than this. I'm going to open this up so it's a single layer. And I'm cutting this out just as a single layer. Now, taking a look at this fabric in particular, this piece of muslin was so wide on the bolt that someone had cut it in half so it's easier to handle. So, for instance, on this side, there's the selvedge, and then on this side, it's a cut edge. Now, what I need to do is I can't reference this cut edge. I need to clip it and then tear that cut edge off. Now that I've torn this edge off, I know that I can trust that this is going to be a perfect straight line. I'm going to lay out my pattern piece so I have like two inches extra from center front. The top edge here has already been torn off. We just did that. So, so far we've torn this edge and we've torn this edge. Now we want to come down in here and we want to find enough room to fit the pattern piece in. And I'm going to tear in this direction. And then I want to find enough room here to get the other side of the pattern piece. Clip that and start tearing it down. And then I want to find a spot where both of these will come together perfectly. Right at a corner and that way I'm not wasting any other fabric that I have to. So here we have our piece of muslin that will fit for cutting out this pattern piece. Now if we take a closer look at this fabric, you can see some of the edges are curling under and then edges are falling apart, threads coming off of this. So right after you tear it, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done so we can clean this up. What I want to do is along each of the four sides, I want to be able to take one thread and I want to see it come off the full distance. So if you find some threads where you peel them off and they come up shorter than the full distance, then go and find another one until you can finally get that one thread that will go the full distance. And then do this on all four sides. So now I've gone through and on all four sides, I've 
I was able to peel off one thread that goes the full distance. The reason why that's important is now I know that the very next thread on here is the actual piece of fabric and it's true to the shape and size of the fabric. Now I'm going to prepare another piece here for my back pattern piece. This is the side of the fabric that has the selvage. If you're not sure what the selvage is, it's the edge of the fabric where it's got a super tight weave to it so this will not fray and fall apart when it's in transit moving around and going from the mill out to the customer. This selvage though will not allow you to block out the fabric. So we need to get rid of that. So what you want to do is, if you'll notice, so for instance on mine it's about three quarters of an inch thick and I need to come in and clip just above that. So here I'm going to come in, I'm going to clip for the length, and here I'm clipping for the width. I got those to meet down here in the middle. Now something else that you could do is you can snap this out to get the threads to fall off quicker. And then once you've done that, go ahead and check and make sure you can pull one thread off all four sides and that one last thread goes the full distance. Now for me, on this muslin, I tore off the front from this side and I tore off the back from that side. And now I can come in here and find where the sleeve will go. And you'll notice it's a little bit uneven. I don't want to cut down and cut around or anything like that. What I need to do is, if I want to continue this, I need to clip it, continue that down to where now I can tear into the width Now for me personally, I like to come back to my original piece of muslin and just clean this up a little bit. Also if you're working at a design house and there's a lot of people using the same yardage, it's just kind of a polite thing to come back and clean up these edges for them. And then when I'm folding my fabric back, this is the clean area that I've never used before. I'm going to start by rolling that upwards. And then this is the area where I've recently used it. I like to have that so it'll flop out first because sometimes you just need a quick little piece or something. Or you want to know exactly how much you have left. It's easier to see when this area here is at the end of the roll. The next thing we want to do is we we'll want to press this. So let's turn on your iron to the highest setting possible. And then for steam, you want to have lots of steam. And inside of here, you want to have lots of water. Now, 
Now when I take a closer look at my fabric, some of the edges are nice and flat. Some of the edges are curling under or have really severe wrinkles on here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to take care of these edges. So anything that was curling under, flip your muslin over so now it's curling up. And what we could do is we can come in here and I'm going to flatten those back down. Now here's an example where this is flat and these edges here are curling under. If I leave it curling under, when I come over here to press it, all I'm doing is I'm just pressing it flat, but I'm not fixing the problem. So if it is curling under, what you have to do is you have to flip this over so now it is curling upwards. So now what I can do is I can start in the middle of the fabric and come towards the edge and the edge of my iron will uncurl that for me. So here you can see it's curling up. I'm in the fabric and as I come along it's going to hit that edge and it's going to uncurl it for me. So now I'm getting these edges totally flat and I'm also letting it cool off before I move on to the next section. So now that I have these edges pressed nice and flat, when I come around to the other side, you'll see that these are doing the opposite. These are curling under, so I need to flip this over again so I can get them curling upwards. I can start in the fabric and get those to uncurl and lay flat. Now as you're pressing your edges, you might notice that there's still some yarns that are falling off. And so go ahead and just pull those out until you have where the last yarn on there is nice and tight with the weave and they're not falling off. Now that I have all four of the edges flat and clean and they've had some time to cool off. We can come in here and we can see there's still some wrinkles in the middle of the fabric itself. The muslin will hold wrinkles. So for instance this wrinkle here is from the center of the fabric where it was folded and put onto a bolt. And that crease is probably never going to completely go away. The best that we can do is just get this nice and flat again. And then let this cool off on top of the ironing board. Now let's take a closer look at this muslin. We want this to be perfectly squared up. Because it's fabric and because it's been handled a lot, right now it's not square. So for instance, if I bring a square in here and I'm trying to line the corners up inside there, it's not working. So if I square up with this top edge here, it's not matching with this edge here. So this is what we mean when we talk about we need to block our muslin. So we want to block this out to get it perfectly squared up to how it was originally when it came off of the loom at the mill. The first thing we need to do is we need to determine in which direction what's incorrect and what would how are we going to correct that. That's what we need to do. So what I want you to do is the longer edges of this, this is the length grain. And I want you to find the middle of the length grain. So we're going to go ahead and just fold this in half, take out a pencil, and put a light mark right here in the middle. And then we're going to come over to the other length grain, and we'll do the same thing. We'll fold this in half, 
find the middle. So you know that in general, this is the center of this piece of fabric. Now if I come in here with a square ruler and I'm lining up with one edge and as I bring the ruler over to this edge, you can see that it's uneven. And the same thing would happen if I follow along this edge here. You can see it's uneven down in this area and then of course the other corners as well. Now a way that you can check it is, remember we put a little mark right here and here at the center of this piece? If you were to bring that mark and come and line it up with this one here, so the marks are on top of each other and the edges are touching, you can see that it's uneven here and underneath here as well. Then let's say I wanted this edge all along here to be parallel with this edge. So I move my fabric, I get them parallel. You'll notice that the two marks don't line up. The edges out here is uneven as well as over here. Now here's what you're going to do. So we need to have these two marks on top of each other when this edge here, so this is the length grain edge, when those are parallel, we want those two marks on top of each other. Now if you take a look at it, this mark is shifting that way. So if I draw this in, you can see that one's there, this one's underneath, and we need, so we need this one to shift going in this direction. If you come over here, you can see also that this edge is coming up short. And so this edge also needs to shift in that direction. What's happening underneath here is the opposite. We need this mark to travel that direction. And the edge of the fabric here is coming up short, so it needs to also travel in that direction. Now the easiest way to do this is you want to grab the corners that are coming up short. So if I move along here, this corner is coming up short, so I'm going to grab it. And if I come along here, the corner underneath is coming up short, so I'm going to grab that. Now when I unfold this, I'm holding it on the bias grain. And what I can do is I can pull this bias grain and what's happening is, is this uh, mark right here is traveling that way and this mark right here is traveling that way because I'm pulling them and you could even see, keep your eye on this one, it's traveling towards my hand over here. Keep your eye on this mark and it's traveling towards my hand over here. So this is what we want to do with the grain of the fabric. Now you don't want to just stretch on the bias and you think you're done. Because this corner over here also needs to migrate. Even though we fixed the first half, we need to also fix the second half. So watch what I'm going to do is my hands are going to start traveling towards this corner while I'm still pulling on the bias in this direction. So this hand is pulling, this hand is my anchor. So I'm going to move my anchor up and my pulling hand up and I'll pull this. And I'm anchoring this a little higher and I'll pull that. And I'll anchor this a little higher and I'll pull that. And here I'm getting this last little bit of the corner to come towards me. Now we need to do the same thing down here. We've basically already fixed the first half by pulling on the bias. Now we want to fix this bottom corner. So I'm going to switch. Now this hand is the anchor and this hand is pulling. So remember these were the corners we were pulling on. I'm going to anchor it here and I'm going to pull it there. I'll anchor it here, pull it there, anchor it here. 
And you could even see this corner moving over this direction. Now you're going to see there's a lot of bumps and warbles in your fabric. If right now I were to just push this and flatten it back out, all I'm doing is I'm just putting it back to where it was. So don't do that. Let these bumps stay where they are because all of those grains are shifting. What we're going to do is we're going to carefully come back and just check. Now if I line up the two length grain edges, are the marks on top of each other? The answer is yes. And are the corners now matching? And the answer is yes. So here's an example of it going the opposite direction. Again, when I took the halfway point from here to here, halfway point from there to there, and I take one mark and I put it on top of the other mark and I line up the raw edges right there, you can see that this is going at an angle. Even though the ends are parallel, the length grains are not parallel. Then if I were to come in here and I were to try to make the length grains parallel, then of course you could see how out here on the edges, these are not parallel. And then these two marks are not on top of each other. In this instance, it needs to do the opposite. So we need this mark to travel that way and the mark underneath, we need it to travel that way. So then they'll land on top of each other. What we're gonna do, if yours looks like this, then the solution that you need to do is, remember, you wanna come along and grab the corner that's coming up short. So when I come out to this edge here, the top layer is shorter, the bottom layer is longer. So I'm going to grab the top layer. And then when I travel over to this side, the top layer is longer, but the bottom layer is shorter. So I'm going to grab the layer that's coming up short. When I unfold this, now I'm holding it here on the bias. So that's what I need to pull on. And then you can see this notch or this mark right here is traveling towards that hand. And this mark right here is traveling towards that hand. So now basically we fixed this corner is a right angle, this corner is a right angle, but these corners here still need to travel in the correct directions. So I'm going to move down this way. This is the direction I was stretching in, so this becomes my anchor, and I'm going to pull this over. So basically I'm just doing the opposite of the other example. And now we'll switch, this hand will become the anchor, and this hand will pull. And we're getting this corner to travel that way. Then I want to come up, and my number one priority is, I want the two length grains to be parallel, and completely ignore these marks, and completely ignore the outside corners. So I'm going to get these parallel. And then this lets me know I still have a little bit more to stretch on it because these marks are not quite stacked on top of each other and the ends aren't quite matching. So again, I'm going to grab the ends that are coming up short. I just need to stretch it a little bit harder. I'll come in here, I'll check this again. And everything looks good, so I'm going to take this and go back to the ironing board and get it all steamed and tell those grains to stay exactly where they're at. Now I spent a lot of time getting this so everything is squared up. But it's really fragile right now. It wants to relax back out to where it used to be, and I want to change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this folded over, and when I handle it, I'm going to handle it holding the two layers so it's got a little more structure to it and things aren't going to move. I want to move the shortest distance possible to going over to my iron. So wherever you're blocking your fabric, your ironing board and your iron should be really close by. Now as I set this up here, again I have my iron on the hottest setting possible and lots of steam.
so what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing downwards and I'm telling all of those grains to settle down and stay in the location that they're in. But be really careful, we're not gonna crease the edge here, so leave this rounded. You also wanna let this cool off. So what I'll do is I'll put my hands on here and your hand will quickly soak up the heat and it's cooling off in place and this is setting the grains. Now again, I'm gonna handle this by holding both layers and I wanna bring this to the center and I'm gonna unfold this. And I'm gonna press going downwards so I'm not moving the iron across. Everything is going straight down. Again, I'm gonna use my hands to soak up the heat. And I'm letting this cool off flat before I move it. So what I'll do is I'll fold this in half so it's two layers thick. I'll bring it here to the tabletop. And then we can come back in here and check the balance again. So I'm gonna bring the center of this to meet up with the center of that. And most important, I want this edge here to be parallel with that edge there. So I'm first of all looking to make sure that these edges are parallel. That's my number one priority. Then my second priority is, did these two marks align and if yes, that's good. And is it parallel here? And the corners are meeting here as well? And the answer is yes. So this piece here happens to be perfectly blocked and everything is good to go. So when you're ready, I want you to come in to take a photo of this to show me that you've blocked it correctly. And we're gonna need one picture where I can see all the way through to both sides of the fabric and then a second photo where I can see a short distance here of the length grains parallel and the two pencil marks lining up together. What I wanna do is I'm gonna just steam it one more time. And again, everything I'm doing is going just straight down. I want these grains to cool off before I handle it. Now that it's cooled off, I'm gonna just press this side one more time as well. Now one of the cool things, if you're working at a design studio, usually they'll have a huge iron press and what you could do is you could put your block up on there and just press the whole thing all in one shot, let it cool off. It has like a steam and heat, and then it'll switch to cold air and it'll blow it cold, and it'll all come out beautiful, pressed, clean, cooled, ready to handle. Now, so I'm gonna take this off the table. And you can tell that I've spent a lot of time letting it cool off by how much it's standing up off of the form right here because all of these grains have cooled off and it's really holding its structure really well. So far I've finished blocking out some muslin for my front and back bodice. And what I like to do when I'm handling this, I'll keep the paper pattern with it. That way you know which muslin is which but also the paper gives us some stability. And when I carry it, I'm gonna carry it holding from the bottom. 
And this way, nothing's going to stretch out and it won't lose that block that you just did. And then one last thing is, for your paper patterns, if they have some wrinkles and stuff on them, you can iron your pattern. What I would do is, this is the side that has all of my pencil on here, and this side doesn't really have much at all, it just has the one line. So I'm going to iron this from the back side. What I want is, I want the iron on low. So basically what I'm going to do now, is I'm just turning my iron off completely. You also want to turn steam off completely. And right now the iron itself is actually a little bit too hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool it off by just ironing on my board first. Just to cool the iron itself off. And then I can come in here and I can prep my pattern piece. And you won't be able to press out all of the really deep wrinkles, but you will notice that this does flatten your paper out nicely. And then the edges will want to curl up on you, but if you get this to cool off flat by letting your hands soak up the heat from the iron, Then you'll notice that your pattern piece doesn't curl up. It stays nice and flat. And then I can put this here with the muslin that I just blocked for it. I'll fold this in half and when I handle it, I'll carry this from the bottom. Now that we've blocked out our front and back bodice as well as the sleeve, go ahead and take a picture of this as part of the assignment. Go ahead and move those off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is, I wanna have you practice one more thing before we get started on cutting these out.